Hello, my name's Steam from Kscale Models, and today I'm doing a little video about workflow. So, I was asked on the 3D printing Facebook group, can I give a video demonstrating some of my workflow? So, the main emphasis of this was on bodies and components, as well as me splitting bodies to create um, panel lines. So, I'm going to use this here. This is the SD Archangel as an example. So, good practice on when you're making a model is, I'll just do a quick demonstration. You draw your whatever shape, in this case, just the box. You extrude it, oh no, and you say this is a new component. So this is best practice because the way that Fusion 360 and Inventor work is they're really designed for you to import components into a final assembly drawing. Um, these components can interact with said assembly drawing, but it's the way that it's designed is you're not supposed to be just creating bodies in the drawing and then um, like messing around with them. So if I did new body, which is what I originally did with this, this will create new body number, let's see what it does, seven. Okay, so let's get rid of that because I don't really want to have that in my drawing. So, what I've done here is I did start off creating a body, but just force a habit really. So, I've eventually decided that no, this body needs to be a component, and that's what this is. This is, if you, I'll go back a step and show you. If you go into bodies, right click, and go create body, oh, complete, complete. Uh, create component from body. This will then let you create a component from a body. Now, I advise to do this as soon as possible because I do something stupid when I go and make panel lines. So, I do split bodies. Now, quick demonstration of this. This is a technique I've used and demonstrated in my... I'm just trying to think it was the... Panel, oh, I think it was like panel line 2 video or something. Anyway, split this body by this. And then I would go in and offset body. No, offset, oh no, offset face. Oh, offset 10, so you can actually see it. Because this is a big model. This is an SD Archangel designed to fit an actual SD kit. So yeah, that... Is how I do a lot of my panel lines. Now, this creates a problem. You can see right here, we've got three different bodies created from this. Now, this means that you start to really add up in the number of bodies that you create. And if you're doing this just in the actual assembly, it can break quite quickly. So let's come out of this. I'll just undo everything I've done. I'll actually close this drawing before I save it. So, do not save, because I do not want to save what mess I've just done there. So, I'm going to go over two drawing, or two models that I didn't follow this with. These are fairly recent, and it will show you the issues of it. So, this here is the Irish class. So, this is the most recent Patreon build. And you can see quite a lot of panel lines in here and it's split into various components. So part A, part B, part E, part C. If you're wondering what happened to part D, part E is always for me the weapons. So I split that off early on to be like this is part E, or at least I always keep that reserved. So this is why you don't see a part D because there isn't one. It's because I split the weapons off to be their own thing. So. Um, where did this go wrong? Well, when I was drawing this, I drew the whole outline before I made it into components. So, when I started to do all these panel lines, it was still in the assembly stage, or at least mostly in the assembly stage. I, at some point, tried to move over to individual components. Now, just so you know how you actually access a component to draw within it, you hit this bit, activate component, and that's you now in that component. You are now doodling in that. You're not in the full assembly, so you can interact only really with these bodies. Um, 
So you can see here, one, two, three. Now let's go back to this and I'll just show you where this is kind of going wrong. So this body here is 811. This body here was purely so that I could line up the stands that this thing was attached to. That's all its purpose was, but it's called body 811. That's a massive number of bodies that I've used in this. And fusion starts to fall apart around the 500 body mark. But that's 500 bodies within the area you're working. If you've got 500 bodies in C and 500 in A, it's happy. But yeah, it went it can go to pieces. Now, when I say go to pieces, let's go and pick a random one. So I'm just going to go into this drawing here. This is going to take a few minutes. So uh, we're going to change this to 0 0.3. See, we're only changing that by 0.1 of a millimeter. That's nothing. It's not quite a... Uh, it doesn't seem to like this. It's taking a while loading. What's it doing? Okay. What's it doing is it... Because the way Fusion works where it goes through things sequentially, so it says, okay, you drew this bit, you extruded this bit, you cut this body, you glued these two bodies together. It's having to do all those uh, operations again. And it starts to lose track of which bodies what. So what we'll see when this eventually goes through, and bear in mind this is kind of frozen at the moment while it thinks about things because I've done something big. Um, it will eventually go, uh, nope, I don't understand. And it will basically give me a lot of red errors saying I can't find out which body you're talking about, which one you're referring to. And this can basically lose you days of work whilst you try to fix a model because you have had to make one very small change to a part right back at the beginning. So this is why I didn't do all the changes some of the patrons were asking for with this model because by the time they were asking for it, it was broke. And changing anything would take me a day's work to fix just all the little things going on. Now, there is some things you can do for this, and that's what I'm going to be showing with the Ray Cal in a moment. But I want to just give you an idea of how broken this is and why it's a good idea to go into components as soon as you can and to split things off. So when I make components, I make them as like sections. So section A, B, C. But oh, okay, now it's worked and uh, something broke. This looks very broken. And we can already see here, yeah, hold on, 220 warnings, 149 errors. And you have to go through and manually fix all those errors because Fusion doesn't know how to fix them. If it did, it would have fixed them. It doesn't know how to fix them. And you can see right away, all my beautiful detail in here is gone. The bridge is a mess. It doesn't know, it's like 100 different bodies you can see here. And oh, here's something interesting. It's named these like 846. When we were working, or when we had this before, it was up to 811. And 811 was like the most recent body that I created. So it's then had to create new bodies for all these splits. And I also suspect it's lost track of them. So it started counting again. So it's just a complete and utter mess. So let's close this and do not save because that is a mess and we will not touch it ever again. So the Ray Callum here is oh, when it actually loads because this is a kind of heavy model as well. Remember, this is one of my large, oh, it is the largest ship I've made. And Neil Gamer is a little wider, but this thing is longer, it's massive. And if you zoom in, there's a lot of detail. So you'll notice at the top here, Rev4 Ver20. So the V20 basically is the version number. Now, these go through quite a lot of saves. I'm working this maybe just a couple of hours a day if I'm working like at my full-time job. And if I'm doing like this, for the whole day, I do try to save regularly throughout the day because, well, I've learned that Fusion's auto save doesn't always work, and I've had it actually crash halfway through saving it, and I lost my auto save. Yeah, that was a whole day's work gone down the drain. So anyway, 
This Rev4 though, that is me making that because you can see this here. This is basically the basic or the hull, but where's that coming from? Well, what happened was this model got so complex and so many bits to it that it was just taking ages to do anything. And uh, what was happening is it's just Fusion doing its normal where it's got this timeline of all these different things that you're doing. So if I go in here, I can find Rev3. I can find Rev2. Uh, this is like, oh, there's a couple of here. And I'm just trying to work out which one's which. Uh, that's the 400 version. That's its own thing. But yeah, that's like, there is, oh, this is, I think, the original. And you'll start to see, yeah, this is where I basically went, you know, from here on, it's taking far too long to load. Let's create a new version. And that's where version 2 came in. So, yeah. um, Actually, it's not even got to the end of the bit. So, yeah. um, I saved this. Oh, sorry. What I did was I exported and I exported as a step file. Step is one of these universal formats, but it also doesn't take all the information with it, which is what I was looking for. Uh, where's step gone there? So yeah, um, this is one of my degrees is in computer aided engineering design, basically knowing that based software like Fusion has proprietary um, file formats. They don't work in other file formats, but there is universal ones that are industry standard and STEP is one of them. Um, but the problem with it is it doesn't take all the information because how Fusion builds up something is not the same way SolidWorks or Blender will build something up. Blender has a completely different um, way of doing things. And SolidWorks, likewise, it has a different way of doing the things, although it is closer related to Fusion and Inventor. That's another thing, actually. Inventor files can be loaded into Fusion because they're made by the same manufacturer or same company. They basically will interact fine. They're, you don't get the full like list of things, but... You, like this down here, but you get enough that you can actually alter it and play with it more than you could say a Blender file. So anyway, coming out of that, once I've saved it as a state file, I'll then import. Now, in Fusion, what you would do is you would go, I'm just trying to remember how you do it. Uh, is it, sorry. Just trying to remember how one does this again because ah yeah upload you click upload you find your file and you upload it now if it is just the set file of all the components you will still get a list of all your different components so uh, sorry if you upload the assembly that's in fusion you will get all your components even the hidden ones so like if i hit the stand you would still be able to get that when you went through and upload it as, oh sorry, re-upload it as a step. Another thing you will need to do is right now it says do not capture history when I go into right click on the full thing. But if you've done it as a step file, it will not automatically capture history. So click that because if you need to go back and change something whilst you're doing this, you can't, oh, you can't unless you do that or at least it's more difficult. And that's the point. Once you do this thing where you save it as a state file and then re-upload it, you lose all ability to change any files or any um, simple dimensions from prior to this. So what you would have to do is you would have to go and edit things in this. So let's just say you realize this hole was the wrong side, size. You would have to go in and redo that hole. Now that might be fine if it's just a simple hole, but what if you've then used that hole to create a pattern along here to create all these other holes? They, those holes don't follow, so you need to redo that pattern. Now that might be a doable, but there is some geometry that you will struggle to basically change the further down you go. So 
when you do that save as a set file trick make sure that you have everything that you need done because if not you're going to have a nightmare of a time changing it in fact one of the things that happened when i was making the recalum here is i found that i hadn't done something right there was an actual error with the model and i had to go back to an earlier version and basically lose everything i'd done after that and move forward it wasn't too bad because i'd like only done a couple of little bits but it gives you an idea that you can basically when you do the save as a state file that's a permanent thing so i would have to try to not have to do that but with some of these earlier versions of the recalum let's just have a quick look at them and uh, we'll go to recalum for this one and uh, i think that this is the one that i was talking about there when i had to uh, go back in version so yeah if i want to go to say into this drawing and oh actually uh, yeah, this one seems to be fairly stable, but there was, I remember when I was doing these, there was bits that were taking forever to load up. I'm going to just try a quick thing here to see if it will do it. No, this seems to be happier than when I was working with it. Uh, there has been a few updates to Fusion since I was working on this drawing, and they might have fixed whatever was causing me issues. But yeah, uh, you may find that your version goes slow because you are doing stupid things like me, like splitting bodies to create all these panel lines, which is, yeah, as I said before, Fusion's not designed to do this. But in some cases, it was the only like way of projecting a line or a panel line onto this surface because it's not, it's a mess under the hood. No, trust me. Um... Yeah, so, anyway, I hope this has given you a sort of insight into how I do my workflow, or how I should be doing my workflow, and what happens when I don't do my workflow. I think I spent more time explaining the errors of me not following that workflow and breaking my model. So, I hope you do not repeat the same mistakes as I do, and I will hopefully catch you next week where I'll be talking about Full Edge.